Hi, welcome to Holy Habitus. Today I'd like to talk to you about King Solomon. We're at 1 Kings 11 in the One Year Bible Reading Plan and it's a fascinating story about how Solomon comes undone. How supposedly the most wise and um, prudent and discerning man in history, whose wisdom in fact is given to him as a grace from God at the beginning of his reign, how, how this incredibly wise person should be subject to such great folly. And uh, we read here that Solomon has a weakness for women. Um, they have this phenomenal fact that he has 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines. Uh, and that they turn his heart towards other gods. And so in his old age, in his latter years, um, we, we see him actually being drawn into the worship of other gods. Which is mind-bendingly, you know, seemingly, seemingly impossible. How could this happen? How could this, this man of great wisdom... Be subject to such a great folly, and um, and it's interesting how it works, isn't it? You know, Solomon's early reign is characterised by the pursuit of God, um, by by great wisdom, by the building of the temple. But in the background, we see bit by bit this folly growing like a weed, um, and it's a weakness for women. Um, kings in those days would often have many wives, and there was a political dimension to that, building treaties and also a prosperity sign of, of, of flourishing and, uh, you know, um, look, at, look at me how, how rich and how favoured I am and, uh, and so on. It reaches epic, almost, well, obscene proportions in, in Solomon's life. 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines. That's a thousand women. Now, I don't even know how the logistics of that works in terms of housing them, let, around, let alone getting around to see them all and and the rest of it. But this is obviously an area of where Solomon was undisciplined in his life, where he left the door open and he just indulged. Uh, and uh, that, if that wasn't bad enough in and of itself, that opened the door to other sins as well. And, uh, and he builds some temples and worship sites that they can worship their gods, uh, and uh, eventually he gets drawn into that worship himself. And so the question this, this week I want us to ask is, what's our Solomon's folly? What area of our life have we left the door open? Um, in what area of our life is the devil most likely to exploit us in the long term? An area of, where we have the lack of discipline and indulgence that just that will grow and build up and, and open the way to other sins crowding into our lives. And let's nip it in the bud as early and as soon as we can. Let's shut the door today rather than allowing it to continue and growing up and ruining the work of God that he wants to do in us. Let's pray for true and holy wisdom, both now and for the rest of our lives and into eternity.